Hi everybody, happy Thursday. Today's video is going to be a simple video, um, but I hope it's an informative video about the different kind of stamps. So I can't believe that I've never made a video like this. I know that I've talked about it several times, but this is going to be a video just on the different types of stamps. <clears throat> so there are basically three types of stamp material. The first one I'm sure you're all familiar with and have in your closets are the traditional red rubber wooden stamp. So you ink up your stamp, stamp it down, you have the block, works out great. The only issue might be every once in a while you can't see through this block so you may not be able to line it up properly. Um, and we're going to talk about how to fix that in just a second. Um, so you have your traditional red rubber stamp. So red rubber stamps are made of exactly that, red rubber. Some of them are made out of gray rubber. They're usually a pretty good quality stamp, um, last quite a while. Um, again, you just use a little bit of cleaner to clean them off. They usually have some kind of cushion on them to give them some kind of give, and then of course you hold on to the block to stamp them. This is what stamping was for years and years and years that a lot of people have used. Now, I will warn you, uh, once I have my sample here, that uh, red rubber stamps will eventually crack, just depending on what kind of environment they're in, how old they are, how often you clean them. This is probably my oldest red rubber stamp. Obviously, it has my name on there. And it has um, started to dry out. You can see that it's very well loved. I used it a lot. And it is now starting to crack. So, I don't know if that's showing up on the camera there. It still works great, but now it's kind of a novelty stamp where I just leave it on the shelf and look at it and I try not to use it. You can buy conditioners to condition your stamp to try to help prevent that from happening. Um, there are a lot of... Um, soaps and cleaners and conditioners out on the market that you can use to try to help that. All right, so just a warning about that. But if you want a crisp, clear image and you want the stamp to last a pretty long time, I mean, this stamp is probably over 20 years old. This stamp is very, very old. Um, you wanna invest in red rubber stamps. Not all manufacturers make red rubber stamps. Not everybody prefers red rubber stamps. Uh, another option you have, and I'll talk about the stamp positioning of that in a second. Um, my two favorites would be photopolymer or clear stamps, okay? Now, let's not confuse the two. There is definitely a difference between photopolymer stamps and silicone stamps. So let's talk about the better one first. The better one is photopolymer stamps. Photopolymer stamps are made by most manufacturers these days. It's a better quality clear stamp. You'll know it's photopolymer because eventually the stamp will stain. It does accept ink better. Um, so you can see on this flower that it started to turn like an orange color. That just proves that it is a photopolymer stamp because silicone stamps will not stain. I do not like silicone stamps. If I can help it, I try not to buy silicone stamps, um, but they are a cheaper price point. They are clear, so it makes it easier to line them up, and I'll show you how to prime silicone stamps. But some companies that make clear stamps would be um, Altenew, Stampin' Up! in photopolymer. Um, the Ton, she makes rubber stamps and photopolymer stamps. Cat Scrappiness uses a good quality photopolymer stamp. Uh, Mama Elephant makes a good quality photopolymer stamp. My favorite company, Hero Arts, makes a wonderful photopolymer stamp at a very reasonable price. So a lot of stamping companies out there that make photopolymer stamps. Now, clear stamps that are made out of silicone. What's the difference, you say? Well, here's a company 
that manufactures stamps and it says mama elephant on it and you would think these are mama elephant photopolymer stamps but they are not this is actually distributed by hampton art so what hampton art did was they took mama elephant's design manufactured these stamps so that they're at a little bit lesser price point and they sell them at your big box stores so these were at joann's however this is not the same as the Mama Elephant stamp in terms of quality. This is a silicone stamp. It is not a photopolymer stamp. Now, how do you tell the difference? Well, the one way you can tell the difference is just by feeling it. Um, it they feel a little more squishy. Sometimes they're a little slimy. Um, here are the two magazines I just picked up at Barnes & Noble. And usually when you get free stamp sets, they're usually silicone stamp sets. Um, the stamps that you order from China on those aftermarket websites, I'm not even going to name them. I think you guys all know what I'm talking about. Those are copied silicone stamps. A lot of those stamps are copyright infringement as well. Um, so I don't recommend that, but they are silicone stamps. But silicone stamps are basically rubbery. Think about... Think about caulk. Think about the silicone that you put around your bathtub. It's a rubbery substance, right? What is silicone designed to do? It is designed to resist moisture. I can't even get these out. All right, so this came out of the Make Special Cards kit. It's a little kit here, and it had these little um, ballerina bunnies. I got these for Leah. And they are silicone. And then this set, very cute set. I really only got this for one stamp, the little hedgehog here. Um, this came out of the Creative Stamping Magazine. These stamps are silicone. Silicone stamps, like I said, normally they are, they're, sometimes they're slimy. They're very difficult to get off the carrier sheet. So I recommend when you get a new set, pull them off immediately. Because if you wait, they, they may not come off. A lot of times they will yellow, um, but they're very stretchy. They're very rubbery. That's what they feel like. Um, where a good quality photopolymer stamp is not, it's a little more stiff. So here's a set from Stampin' Up. And it's just, I know you can't feel this through the screen, but believe me, it's a little bit tougher. It's a little bit stiffer. Um, ironically, they even smell differently. I know you can't tell that, but if you get your stamps at home, um, these have, I want to say a little harsher smell, the photopolymer stamps do, um, just because of the way they're manufactured. The silicone stamps really don't have an odor. Um, they just, they just... They don't. Um, so if you're an odor person, you might like the silicone ones, but the smell does eventually go away. But you can see how easy it is to move this stamp and how pliable it is. That is a silicone stamp. The biggest difference, that's how I can tell right away if a stamp is silicone or photopolymer, by the way, and I will always take photopolymer over silicone and over red rubber if I can help it. I like the photopolymer stamps better. Um, but I want to show you how, how differently they, they stamp out. So, and again, paper makes a difference, ink makes a difference. I have here a piece of Nina Solar White. The silicone stamps will usually only stamp well with a pigment type ink. Um, and that's because, again, they are designed to resist ink. So a pigment ink will work better on the silicone stamps. And again, those free stamp sets that you get with the magazines, um, Hampton Arts, Anna Griffin, they are all silicone stamps. You will need to prime these stamps, and I'm going to show you what I mean here in just a second. Red rubber stamps and photopolymer stamps, you can pretty much use anything. You don't necessarily need to prime the stamps. Um... You can use anything on red rubber stamps and, and photopolymer stamps, dye ink, or pigment ink. So I'm going to pick out a detailed image here. I'll take this little bunny here. And you can see it's very difficult. You have to be very careful because they will rip easily, the silicone ones. And I'm going to stamp this with some regular 
Here's some Hero Arts inks that were on my desk. So regular dye ink. If I could get them open. Wow, Hero Arts. Talk about making these tight. I can't get any of these open. All right, there we go. All right, so you can see that I've inked this stamp up. And already immediately you can see that the ink is starting to um, separate from the stamp. It's starting to uh, not bubble up, but um, it's not sticking. It's not accepting the ink. So when I go to stamp with this now, and this is a brand new stamp set, the ink is blobby, it's not crisp, it just doesn't look very good, right? Okay, so how do we help that? I'm not saying don't ever buy silicone stamps. Obviously, I buy silicone stamps. It's not my first choice. So what you need to do is what's called prime or prep your stamps. So what I've done now is just clean the stamp off, a little bit of cleaner, and my little microfiber towel. So we're going to prime the stamp. So how we're going to prime it, there's a number of ways. The first way is you can uh, is, is obviously cleaning it. You always want to clean it first to get any residue off the stamp. The second way is to take any kind of eraser. So I have a regular rubber eraser here. And you just very carefully want to rub the top of that stamp. What you're doing is, again, just kind of removing any excess residue from manufacturing off the stamp. You can do this with your photopolymer stamps as well. If you do this with your photopolymer stamps, the step that I'm showing you next, um, it will uh, prevent your stamps from staining. Um, I also have another eraser here. This is a mono sand eraser, so it's a little bit of a tougher eraser, but it'll go in and just rough up, give the stamp some tooth so that it will accept the ink. This does not hurt your stamps at all. Okay, so the first thing is to clean it. The second thing is to sand it or take an eraser over it. And I don't mean like take a sanding block to it. You could do that if you wanted to. Um, it won't hurt it. The most important thing is this step here. This is the Versamark stamp. This is a Versamark stamp pad, which is clear, sticky ink. This helps to prime your stamps because what this is gonna do is it's gonna go into the stamp and it's going to fill in all of the imperfections in the stamp, but get the stamp to accept the ink by absorbing this clear sticky ink. So you just kind of stamp that on there, stamp it off. So you can see some of the residue from the ink there. Now, I'm not even gonna wipe this off. I'm gonna leave it the way it is and I'm going to stamp it again. So using the same ink, And you can already see the difference where the ink is not being resisted. The stamp is not resisting the ink. It's accepting the ink. So now we're going to stamp it again. Look at the difference between not primed using a silicone stamp and priming that silicone stamp huge difference. So if you have images that aren't stamping correctly, um, clean, the, clean the stamps very thoroughly with a little soap and water and then condition it. So the best way to condition it, like I said, is to rub it down, a little sanding or eraser on it, and then stamp with Versamark ink and I just stamped it off and then go back and stamp it again. The other way that these stamps work very well is to use a pigment ink on them. Pigment ink is like a paint, so it's very thick, so it sticks to the stamps a lot better. So I'm going to go to another one of these stamps. So here's another one out of that set. It has not been primed. And I'm going to use a Distress Oxide ink here. So this is Picked Raspberry and we'll see how it does. So you can see right off the bat, it stamped very clear, and that's because I used a pigment ink. Because again, pigment inks are, they, they, they have a 
a um, binder in the ink. It's not as a translucent and it helps to hold the ink. So I'm gonna prime this stamp now. So I'm cleaning it off. Take my mono eraser. Silicone stamps also do not like to stick to blocks very well. Once they come off their carrier sheet, they, they don't like to go back on the carrier sheet, just so you know. You can use a little double adhesive tape on the back side if you wanted to, if it was moving around too much. Okay, so I just used my mono eraser. Now I'm going to stamp this down onto my VersaPad. Stamp it off. And I'm gonna go back in with that same picked raspberry. And now the stamp is primed. I know you guys can't see it, but I can see a world of difference between the two images. Let's have the camera focus in here. There we go. Come on. There we go. So look at the eye on this image and the nose. The eye is not um, as clear. The nose is kind of splotchy. The dress here is a little splotchy. Look here, where the eye is definitely rounder. The nose, um, the whiskers came out clear and the dress came out clear. So yeah, it's not a huge difference, but it makes a difference between the first image with it not primed and using a dye ink. So if you have oxide inks, there's a benefit there to using them, okay? All right, so that's the difference between using silicone stamps and using photopolymer stamps. Um, photopolymer stamps usually always stamp clear the, the first time you use them. Every once in a while, there might be a residue. Now, the biggest downfall to photopolymer stamps and to silicone stamps is their lifespan. From what I understand, they, they don't last as long as rubber stamps. I have had some stamps go yellow. They still stamp good. Um, and I've had a couple that just kind of, I want to say disintegrated, my older, older sets. They just got old and kind of left us. Um, and that's fine. You want to just make sure that you're always cleaning your stamps and taking good care of them. Um, I had ordered the Anna Griffin Treasury set. By the way, they are sending me new sleeves. Um, I did use these the other day. These are silicone stamps. So right away, you can see they, they are a little tough to pull off the sheet. And they are that very stretchy rubbery. And they will not accept regular ink right away. They get splotchy. Which is why Anna sells pigment inks. She uses the color box inks. So here's a brand new one. That's with the Hero Arts dye ink. Not bad, but well, let's prime it and see how much better we can get it. I wish Anna would switch over to photopolymer. So yeah, if you have a stamp set that you're just not having any luck with, try this. Another problem that could be with your photopolymer or silicone stamps could be that they were manufactured incorrectly. This is a um, hot material that's poured onto a cast and sometimes they don't manufacture correctly and you just get a bad stamp. Just call the manufacturer. So there it is, not primed, there it is primed. Again, just a slight difference. You can see it better in real life. This stamp is definitely crisper. You can see the lines better. It's not as smudgy versus the not prime stamp. All right, now I had mentioned in the beginning of the video, if you have red rubber stamps, what? how do you deal with not being able to see through them because you can't see the block? So there's two things you can do. You can purchase a stamp positioner designed for wooden stamps. Um, this is one from Inka Dinka Doo. 
There's another one. I don't know if Stampin' Up! still sells it or not. Called a Stampamajig. Um, but it's basically two pieces. So, let's say I want to stamp the sentiment here. And you could ink it up, eyeball it, and stamp it down. But let's say you think, okay, that's not straight enough. So this stamp positioner comes with two pieces, a T-square basically, and a plastic sheet. You could make this at home with a, a T-ruler if you have it. So what you're going to do is you're going to put your plastic sheet down shiny side up and you're going to put your T-ruler and you're going to butt it right up against the corner here. So this corner is going to line up with this corner. Okay, so this is now completely straight lined up, butted up against that joint there. We're going to ink up our stamp and we are going to take the corner of the stamp here and slide it right into that corner just like blocks, okay? So we want to make sure that plastic doesn't move, this doesn't move. We're going to take this and stamp it straight down. Not drop the stamp. But that's okay because if that happens you just wipe it up. I hope you guys like that I leave the bloopers in there. Okay, so plastic butted up against the T here. Take the square the corner of the stamp, stamp it straight down, lift it straight up. All right. Now we have a guide. This is a template. So now we decide where we want this. Let me find something to stamp it on. Okay. Let's say I want to stamp it on here. All right. I'm going to take my guide and shadow it exactly where I want it on my image. So I want it right there. Now I'm going to take the T part and butt that right up against the plastic because I know now when I lift this and take it out of the way that my stamp will stamp straight in the exact position I want it. I'm going to butt the two corners up here, stamp straight down, move this out of the way, pull straight up. So now I've positioned my wooden stamp without being able to see through the block. Okay. Now, what a lot of stampers are going to now with the stamp positioning tools that are out there, you have the Tim Holtz tool, and he's just come out with a new mini tool, which is great. You have um, the Misty tool. You have so many different things to line up. What do we do with our rubber stamps now? What do we do with all these beautiful rubber stamps? We love the stamps, but they're not photopolymer. How do we use them? Okay, well, I'm glad you asked. We unmount our stamps. What? That's right. We unmount the stamps. So here's a stamp I showed the other day. I want to unmount this stamp now because I want to keep it with my chocolate set. So you're going to purchase what's called Easy Mount Cling Foam. I sell it in a big sheet. This is eight and a half by eleven. It's five dollars. It will last you a long time, depending on well, depending on how many wooden stamps you have. It has the foam on there. Now there's a thinner foam and a thicker foam. It doesn't matter. Um, just personal preference. One side is sticky, tacky. The other side is smooth. But you can see there that it has a coating on it. So what it's going to do, show you exactly here. I have a scrap piece here. First thing you're going to do is unmount your stamp. So you want to pull the rubber of the stamp away from the wood. Now I am not going to give you expert tips on how to do this. Most of the stamps will pull apart and what you eventually want is just this rubber piece, an unmounted stamp. This is the excess foam. You can throw that away. Um, I give my kids the blocks to play with or I take um, silicone stamps and I reuse the blocks for my silicone stamps but now you can do whatever you want with this block on these unmounted stamps if I have any excess rubber I will go through and I will trim that excess off because the closer you can get 
to your image, the cleaner your line is going to be when you go to stamp this image. So I will cut off any excess red rubber that I can. Then I'm gonna trace this image. onto the sticky side up because I'm going to stick the sticky side on the back of the stamp. This is turning into a way longer video guys. I'm sorry. I'm going to try to hurry up here. I'm now going to cut on the inside of that line. This is called unmounting your wood stamps and turning them into cling stamps. So you have red rubber cling stamps. All right, so once that's cut off, we're gonna remove the adhesive part. So now this is nice and sticky. And we're going to attach our rubber stamp. If you have any excess, of course, you want to cut that off. Okay. Now the other side of the stamp, you can remove the paper backer. And now this stamp is ready to go and ready to be stored. We've taken it off of the wood block and now made it a cling stamp so we can now use this on clear blocks. All right, I didn't ink that up well, but there you go. All right, so there are the three types of stamps. We have silicone stamps that are not primed, and then these are the ones that we primed, and then we also have um, red rubber stamps and photopolymer clear stamps. If you don't know what a stamp is before you purchase it, don't be afraid to ask the manufacturer if it's silicone or photopolymer. Again, my first choice as a stamper is always photopolymer, um, but it's up to you guys what you, what you purchase. It's your money. The silicone stamps are lesser expensive, but again, um, it's, I don't know if they're worth the hassle or not. It's up to you. Thanks for watching, guys, and keep on stamping.